Happy Saturday, Messiah. This is Pastor Harris, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about where we're at as a congregation with our programming and our building use. I know King County has now moved into phase two, and a lot of people are wondering, well, how does that affect communities of faith? How does that affect Messiah? And, and what's Messiah going to do? What is our response going to be uh, to this? And I want to talk a little bit to you about that today. Our staff met on Tuesday and went over all the regulations and procedures and opening up a facility like ours, a religious community, is quite an um, involved effort. And um, so we're doing it thoughtfully, we're doing it carefully, and our council president, Charlie Radabaugh, was there, and, and he was adding his input from a leadership perspective, and we will be working to slowly um, communicate and what we will be doing, both programming and building-wise. So let me uh, just start off a little bit with what... Uh, is going on in Messiah now. We as a building are not generally open at this point. So I, I want to um, be clear about that, that for most people coming in and out of the building is not something that we are doing uh, right now. The folks who are in the building on a given week, and I'm going to have to go through my list here. So on Saturdays, the Seventh-day Adventist worship leaders are in. Uh, their sound people, their camera people, uh, their worship leaders, they're in. It's a small group of people who are in on Saturdays. On Sunday, of course, Sunday morning, um, Messiah's worship leaders um, are musicians, our um, singers, the folks who do sound and camera and are in front of you for worship are there. Uh, live streaming worship on Sunday morning and um, that again is a small group of people usually between eight and, and ten people starting this Sunday tomorrow actually the 28th of June the Korean Presbyterian Church will begin um, worshiping both worship leaders and congregation members now they're a small congregation and um, they are going to be observing all the policies and procedures and being trained in how to be in the building and what location, what door to come in. And I'll, I'll mention that a little bit here um, um, in just a few moments. So they're going to be, as a small group, in the building on Sunday afternoons. Also, as you know, Sunday uh, afternoon, uh, our grab-and-go community meal will continue, and so those leaders will be in the building. Uh, Wednesday morning, our food bank volunteers continue to be in the building as they have the whole um, during this time of pandemic. And then our Thursday evening community meal uh, folks are, are in the building on Thursdays. Now, staff at this point still do not have any regular office hours in the building. We did meet in a very socially distanced way last Tuesday to plan and talk and go through all the regulations uh, that our state and King County uh, have put into place to gather safely in phase two and phase three. And so we were talking about uh, what that looks like. Some details around our building and its use at this time. Because of where our main restrooms are and our exits and entry points and all the different rooms we have in the building, it seems like we have a lot of space and could put a lot of people in there. But because of how it's configured and how that relates to the, the regulations, especially uh, every unique space needs its own restroom facility. And because you can't, um, you have to, you have to include people in the sanctuary, being in the gathering space, being in galley hall. Um, you can't think of it as three distinct places, as sort of one unit because of our restrooms and where we come in and out of the building. And so square footage wise and people wise, we're estimating at this point right now that in terms of being in the building, we can't have any more than 60 people total uh, in the building at any time in, in terms of our total space. You can only have two people in each of our main restrooms at a time. And so 
we are still fairly limited. And even if we can't think about it as 60 people in the sanctuary, 60 people in the in galley hall, 60 people in the gathering space, um, because of how we're configured, we can't think of it that way. We have to think of it as in this space, we can only have about 60 people uh, throughout the building. Uh, now we're clarifying which kind of volunteers and staff does that include or are they separate from that number? We're still working on clarifying that, but it's a relatively small number that can be in the building. Um, when we do have time generally for people to be in the building, it's probably going to be for just a couple hours, one day a week when staff is there so we can begin to teach and train people how you be in the building. And just for um, a kind of an overview, and staff are already practicing this, people who come in to do the food bank or the community meal are going to be starting to practice this. First of all, you got to take your temperature before you come to the church. If it's 100.4 or higher, you cannot come in. If you are exhibiting any symptoms of the COVID-19 virus, you cannot come in. You have to stay home, stay isolated, and um, be responsible that way. Um, camera just a bit. There we go. It's kind of sliding down. Um, so temperature, got to take it before you come in. Uh, before you come in the building, you have to have a mask on and you have to keep it on the whole time you're in the building. The only exception to that is worship leaders who are distanced in the front of the sanctuary away from anyone else uh, or our singers who will be leading us in, in worship are behind a plexiglass screen so that as they sing um, that they're, they don't spread the droplets with the virus all over uh, the sanctuary. When we do get to the time when people can be in the building worshiping, um, everyone will need to wear a mask during worship if you're not a singer or worship leader. And uh, so you can sing gently uh, through your mask is how I think we're, we're going to define it when that time comes and we begin to open up and have people in the building for worship. We are not doing that at this point as Messiah except for two exceptions. One is tomorrow on the 28th when we'll be bringing a very small group of senior high school seniors and their families in to receive a quilt from their family. Um, they will be distanced. They'll be wearing masks. They'll have followed all the procedures. Our song leaders will be behind the screen. I or Kirsten, when she's reading, when we're up front, we won't have masks on, but we'll be far enough away from everyone in the sanctuary that um, we're hoping to keep people as safe and well as possible. Um, so the idea, you take your temperature, you wear a mask when you come in, you have to log in uh, who you are, contact information, where you're going to be. Um, you take the pen out of the sanitized cup and you do all that. You put it in the used cup when you're done. Um, you use hand sanitizer immediately. As you're in the building, uh, washing hands frequently, always having that mask on, keeping uh, uh, six feet apart at least from other people. And then, of course, when you leave the building, you got to log out and, um, and then go about the rest of your day. So those are just sort of the, the minimal things. We had a whole marker board full of things that we have to... Uh, put into place and have to follow and we're creating a manual um, for um, kind of easy access and what the policies and procedures are. When we come to the point where uh, the staff will be in on Tuesdays and we'll open the, the facility for a couple hours so if people need to come in out they can. All these procedures will need to be followed. We'll have a designated COVID-19 supervisor. Whenever there are people in the building, there needs to be a designated supervisor who's trained in all the policies and procedures and make sure everyone's following them. Um, masks, logging in, logging out, hand sanitizing, washing hands frequently, making sure people stay six feet apart, making sure that everyone's taking their temperature before uh, they've come to the building. The staff is already uh, we practiced this this last Tuesday when we were together, and we will continue to practice it. When we get good at it, we'll know how to instruct other people. So down the road at some point, and I don't know when this point is going to be yet, 
Uh, we're waiting and watching what is going to happen to King County now that we're in phase two. We said we would take about two weeks uh, to watch and learn how the county is responding. Um, and as a, when I speak today, Saturday, uh, June 27th, I mean, it seems that we're starting to have increases again. And we, you know, we can think today, looking around at other parts of the country that opened up a little earlier, maybe weren't as strict in some of their policies. We see incredible spikes in the amount of virus and hospitalizations. And so uh, following the, the lead of Messiah leadership and what we did in our May online event, um, everyone's encouraging. Messiah can go slow. We will continue to keep worship online. Uh, we will continue to provide online opportunities for education and uh, fellowship and service projects, those sorts of things we will continue to do throughout the summer. When the time comes when we begin to have activities in the building again, and again, I can't stress enough, I don't know when that's going to be. Um, we're going to play it safe. But when we do, um, again, in phase two or phase three, we can have no more than 60 people in the building. All the procedures that I've outlined and more will have to be followed um, for something like if, if there's a small group meeting, there will need to be a designated COVID-19 supervisor, making sure everyone's following policy and procedures. Um, that's why right now we are not distributing keys in any wide manner. Um, because people need to be taught, and they need to be trained, they need to know how to be the supervisor for any group of people that are in the building. I can't stress how much I think it is our responsibility uh, as good citizens and good neighbors to one another, as followers of Jesus, who, you know, the greatest commandment, Jesus says, is love God and love your neighbor. Our uh, most basic response right now is to learn how to to you know, be loving of ourselves as a community, caring of ourselves as a community, and caring for our neighbors. We don't want to become a place that causes, you know, adds to the problem. We don't want to be a community of people uh, that are going to be causing harm to others. Um, you know, again, as your pastor, I encourage you as as much as possible. Now it's state mandated. When you're out and you're in an enclosed space, you got to wear a mask. I encourage you to wear it all the time. I was in downtown Seattle yesterday. I got a haircut. It was amazing. I mean, we're making some progress here. So I was out. I was in downtown Seattle. Didn't take my mask off the whole time. I was outside. I was inside. And the cool thing was there was not very many people out. But everyone who was out in downtown Seattle was wearing a mask. Uh, people were staying apart from one another. It was really heartening to see that people were taking care of one another in that way. And I really want to frame our actions in that way as followers of Jesus. It's our job to take care of each other and our community. We're stewards of each other's health, each other's relationships. We're stewards of our community life, and we can set a good example of that by something as simple as wearing a mask. That's not a political thing. It's a common sense, good stewardship thing and that as followers of Jesus, we're able to, to love ourselves and our neighbor in a way that promotes health and safety. And so really, as your pastor, I want to encourage that, uh, that we all follow that, both when we start to gather again at the building, but right now when we're out in public. I said in my first sort of video uh, uh, segment for everybody, uh, when when this all started that we're going to be on a roller coaster and we're on a roller coaster uh, the curve was flattened cases started to fall and now they're starting to rise again it's gonna be a roller coaster uh, for i believe these next 12 to 18 months it's just until there's a vaccine and it's widely distributed and uh, we have developed immunity across a wide section of society across a wide sec section of the globe, uh, we are gonna be on this roller coaster. So we have to be ready to be responsible, to take care of one another in a healthy manner, and uh, to begin to learn, continue to learn, how to do this in a safe and effective manner um, until the day comes when we can rejoice and celebrate and uh, 
take the masks off and not have to worry about using hand sanitizer all the time and and those kinds of things when you hug each other again um, you know and go back to to greeting one another close to one another in, in with a sense of sharing that peace with one another. that that time will come I know it will um, but we have to be smart and we got to play this safe until we get to that time when we can do that so whether down the road it's worship or small group meetings or service projects whatever it is at the church in the building uh, when that time comes there's gonna be very strict procedures that everyone's gonna have to follow absolutely got to have a mask on in the building absolutely have to log in and out absolutely have to take your temperature beforehand absolutely have to wash your hands numbers of times when you're in the building stay six feet apart from people who are not in your household all those things will have to be practiced down the road when we're generally in the building with one another um, I'm not even gonna guess when that's gonna be we have to see how this phase two reopening goes originally we had talked about um, uh, two weeks after King County goes into phase two that we would begin to follow some of the same um, we'll see cases are going up numbers are spiking so let's listen for these next couple of weeks and see what's going on in our county in our state and in the states around us and and then we'll see right now as I said online options are going to be going full speed and I'm excited about continuing to to learn how to do that one thing I do want to mention is that our website is undergoing a redesign and all of our social media our website how we communicate is is undergoing a, a redesign and we're going to be rolling that out slowly over the next couple months and so look forward to some fun new ways of interacting with each other through our website and uh, I think it's gonna be great um, we got some cool new designs and, uh, and logos and, and it, it's, it's going to be good. It'll be a good way to say, hey, we are Messiah. We are a community. We are together even when we can't physically be together. I think I want to end uh, today because I wanted to keep this under 20 minutes. Um, I want to end today with a little bit of a talk about a significant event for Messiah that's coming up. Uh, in uh, the middle of August, uh, Tracy Vontney will be officially retiring. And we had planned on August 9th to have a big worship celebration and a, a big uh, party celebration of Tracy and her ministry. Or as she always tells me, in worship, celebrate God, don't celebrate me. Of course we'll do that, um, but we'll also celebrate Tracy. Um, but what we are going to do is we are going to have... A live stream worship where we will celebrate Tracy's ministry celebrate God's presence in her life and our life through Christ uh, so on August 9th please be part definitely a part of that live stream service we'll have uh, some different ways that we can be a part of that and do that um, we are not going to be having the big gathering again because we are limited in and we can only get so many people together it would basically not be a really great fun party so we are going to put that off and when it's safe and when we can get together as a whole congregation whenever that's going to be and uh, down the road um, I don't know but when it is we are going to have that big party and get together and Tracy will have been retired for a while but we'll all get back together and we'll have a big party and we'll celebrate her her life and her ministry and her faith and um tell stories about her and eat together and laugh and cry and do all sorts of wonderful things so and that will not be on August 9th that will be down the road sometime when we can do that as a whole people gathered together and people who know Tracy from across her 30 years of ministry can fly in and be a part of everything and feel safe and good about doing that so that will be down the road right now listen and watch for a little bit more information about what we are doing on August 9th and we'll share and celebrate on that day and then have a big party down the road again I just want to say thank you to everyone who is a part of the Messiah community whether you're a member a friend a neighbor whether you live across the street or somewhere across the globe and you've become a part of our community I want to thank you for that I want to thank you for sharing your your time and your talent and treasures in the ways that you can 
it's awesome to know that we are a community in Christ together, even during this time of pandemic. The virus can't defeat us. It won't defeat us. We will be the body of Christ doing Christ-like things throughout our day and weeks and months. And when we are back together, some of the amazing things I think that we have learned during this time, we will continue to practice and we will become, I have to say, it will be a new type of Christian community when we gather together. I'm excited about that, what that will look like, that we can take these lessons and put them into practice in a way that vitalizes and revitalizes our ministry together. So I'm very excited about that day down the road when that happens. Until then, we're going to keep on keeping on and uh, praying together, loving on each other, and being uh, the body of Christ together. So Chuck Harris, pastor, serving Messiah Lutheran, our members, friends, and neighbors, I love you all. Blessings. Have a great day. We'll see you in worship soon. Bye now.